Hello and welcome to another episode of Inspiring Women Leaders. Today I am really, really excited to welcome to the show my good friend and sister doc, Dr. Tamara Beckford. Dr. Tamara Beckford is a wife, mum and emergency physician. She's the CEO of Your Caring Docs, that's you are Caring Docs, and the Your Caring Society, where she helps busy professional women put their health and wellness first without guilt. Dr. Beckford is also the host of the Dr. Tamara Beckford Show, where she has interviewed over 150 doctors on the show about self-care, wellness, and the fantastic things that they do outside of medicine. Dr. Beckford has spoken about the importance of self-care on many platforms, including Power to Fly, Scale Your Business Summit, and Blaze Virtual Summit. Most recently, she successfully organized and hosted the virtual graduation for the Entre MD Business School, the largest school for physician entrepreneurs in the USA. You can follow Dr. Beckford on LinkedIn as Dr. Tamara Beckford and at Your Caring Docs, or one word, that's U-R-C-A-R-I-N-G-D-O-C-S on all other social media platforms. What an incredible mission, and I think it's fair to say that Dr. Beckford is leading the way with inspiration. So without further ado, Let's meet Dr. Tamara Beckford. Welcome to the show, Tamara. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on and speak to the show's audience. And I'm sorry mm -hmm. that I don't have the canned applause that you oh, had for me on your show. So I'm just going to do a round of applause of my own. Oh, you've got that. Oh, I got it. <laughs> we have our applause button right handy. Thank you. Thank you so oh, much, God Dr. You. Harrison, for so having cool. me. That is so cool. Thank you. OK, so uh, yes. no, you're very you are more than welcome. You're more than welcome. It's been a long time coming um, between Absolutely. our schedules and I'm so pleased we, we managed to sort it out. So mm -hmm. I've I've read out, you know, quite a, a fairly formal um, intro. So in your own words, mm -hmm. please, could you kind of personalize and humanize uh, your your bio and tell the audience a bit more about yourself, including what your current work roles are and what mm -hmm. leadership positions you currently hold, please. OK. So currently, I am an emergency physician in Houston, Texas. So we are doing the transcontinental interview here, which has been great. Um, I have um, some of the roles that I've held. Of course, I am the CEO of uh, my company, Your Caring Docs. And uh, also, I've been um, in roles as performance improvement. Um, and recently, the wellness, of course, if it's all about wellness, it's the wellness committee within uh, my organization trying to oh, get our physicians. Oh, thank you. I mean, That's great. how could I not be on the wellness That's committee? True. It's true. all about self-care. That's, <laughs> That's true. Yes. Cool, so cool. Then, yeah, those are some of the things that I've been doing more recently, which, yeah. um, like I said, performance improvement. I've done that in the past and currently on the wellness committee. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. That's that's mm -hmm. great. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing those. So we're going to we're going to dive in, do some leadership stuff. So mm -hmm. what would you say is your personal leadership style? So. My personal leadership style, you know, I think when we were talking about this, I'm like, autocratic, it's my way or the highway, but no, absolutely not. Um, the style has, uh, has changed over the many years. And I think that as I've gotten um, a little bit older, a little bit wiser, I've recognized that um, the autocratic, hey, what I want to have done it's the best way. Trust me, I thought about it long enough and I've gone over all the 5,000 different ways that things can go wrong and I've fixed it and therefore you need to do it my way. Recognize that that's not the best way. Um, I've learned through the years and with my mind being opened and I've learned um, from being coached. I'm reading um, a lot of books on um, mindfulness, self-help, that my best approach would be through a style that's similar to coaching, where we are um, collaborative in nature, but yet still leading, you know, having yeah. all the members recognize and that their input is just as important as mine. And that sometimes it's, you know, important for me to step back and have them take control based on the ideas that they've brought to the table. So that's my leadership style. And interestingly so, 
Um, it's something that, as we mentioned, I am an emergency room physician. So one of the things that I should say is one of the things that I lead are codes, right? Yeah, <laughs> so if there's yeah. a code going on, that's a great way that on a consistent basis, we do invoke your leadership styles. And the collaborative style of leadership has definitely helped very, very much so in a code setting in that you're strong, firm, but yet still soft. And like we would say here, pink, soft and pink, you know, <laughs> in order to get everyone's style. So they get their voices heard and, you know, you, but everyone's working together for the betterment of one goal. And in, yeah. in a code situation is for the patient in um, a non-code situation, just within the organization is for the betterment of the organization. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. I, I like the way you, you said that, um, you know, your leadership style has, has changed over the years. And, and I think mm -hmm. uh, there's, you know, there's a very clear place for that. And, and in fact, our leadership styles can change from situation to situation, you know, Absolutely. even even now, you know, you talk mm -hmm. about the the code situation. Well, it's 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 nice to be collaborative and to mm -hmm. uh, help you know, uh, the next generation of, of, of doctors kind of like learn how to do it. But equally, sometimes that's not the time and place for the best kind of education mm -hmm. experience. Yeah, because there's a patient mm -hmm. who's dead who needs to be brought back to life. Right. Correct. Um, and if they're not quite getting it, mm -hmm. then that's where the authoritarian style kind of comes into its own. You know, you just have to take a view and just say, actually, mm -hmm. right, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. Mm -hmm. And the patient gets resuscitated successfully, you know, Correct. but other than that in, in kind of, and there are very few situations where that is a useful, useful style, but other than that, you know, you're, it sounds like you're very democratic and collaborative and coaching your, mm -hmm. yeah. People are kind and it's of... so interesting, too, because as we talk about the authoritative style mm. running the code, once the mm. code has been completed, then you go back to the coaching style. Right. Because it's, it's a bit. it's a fluid motion. So what are some of the things that we did right? What are some of the things yeah. that we can improve upon or like we said, democratic style? So. Yeah. It's such a fluid motion. Leadership is something yeah. that we can recognize that it's not very static. And yeah. so your leadership qualities and your leadership style changes for the moment that's needed. Yeah. 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 And, and I hear you saying as well about kind of like um, it's, it's a fine line between the, the old, it's my way or the highway and Absolutely. the I have a clear vision come along with me. And, and let's make it happen and you're yes. bringing people along so mm -hmm. you know there's a there's a there's a place for that as well but as you say it's a, you're the first person to say that so far it's really lovely to hear about that kind of the fluidity mm -hmm. of how you can change you know leadership personality mm -hmm. quite quite quickly in the moment so thanks thanks for that. that's, that's really good good learning for for the listeners um Okay, so can you tell us about your journey to leadership then over the years, please? Absolutely. So, you know, the journey, it really is a journey of growth because as you go through, and my journey through leadership, we're talking about it within the space of medicine. Um, so it's a journey of growth. So as you're going through life, if we think about the steps that one takes to get into medicine, a lot of times it's a step where you're being told what to do, right? Yeah. So you've given the courses that you need to take in order to get to the next step, right? Once you've taken those courses, even while you're in medical school, you're given the course you might get a, to choose an elective, but overall, these are the courses that you need to take. And this is the day that you graduate once you've completed those courses. So it's a lot of receivership that occurs during that portion. So once I got out of um, the training and the medical school, I was still in that receivership mindset. In there, when I was waiting for leaders to tell me, so my medical director to tell me, I looked at up to the medical director as, um, you know, as someone who look up to their teacher. Like, okay, yeah. so did I do a great job? Can I get a? And and that's not really, although the medical director is there to um, encourage the team as a leader, mm -hmm. they're individuals and they're not really. Some aren't really there. Like, okay, I'm not here to pat you on the back to tell you yeah. to do a good job. You're 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 an adult, you know, yeah. air quotes, go ahead and make it happen. So as time progressed, I recognized that 
this was no longer my role, my role to become a leader, something that I had to take control of. And therefore, that's when I went on to the committees. And then in doing so, I was able to, to take in that that role of a leadership because I recognized things that were important and that I had to use my voice in order to effect change. So yeah. but on a, um, in a performance improvement committee, um, some people might have um, different um, terms for it, but it's yeah. literally a committee where if something had a negative outcome within yeah. the hospital, then you'll come together and then look at the cause effect and how can you effect change. So yeah. I went on that committee and as a representative from the emergency department because a lot of things start off in the ER yeah, you know yeah. so I was able to really say okay no I was here when this happened or and this is what the situation was at the time that it happened yeah. because I mean as much as we want to document it's it's challenging documenting everything yeah. and you can't document emotions. You can't yeah. document, especially when it's in the height of things. So I was yeah. able to evict that change and says, okay, now this is how we can learn from this process. However, yeah. these are some things that we also need to bring back to the ER, but these are also perspectives that you have to recognize that occurs yeah. in the culture in the ER. And that's how I was able to evict that. So that took a time of me moving from the receivership portion of just recognizing and looking um, up to the authority to be told what to do, to recognize yeah. that you have a voice. So that's yeah. my transition into um, yeah. leadership. That's really interesting. I love the way you put that. Really interesting. Um, receivership. I've not, I've not heard that, that term used in that context before, but it's mm -hmm. absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You, yeah, you are the receiver that the, 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 um, the medical director is the almost like it's almost like a paternalistic paternal relationship absolutely. yeah and absolutely you're just seeking their approval like you would with your your, your father mm -hmm. or your teacher or something like that isn't it mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and we are spoon fed in that way for so many years aren't we through medical school through the junior yes. doctor years mm -hmm. it's like you're trying to buck 10 years of trend Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and to, yeah. To, to now grow up and to, to think on your own. And you're you're taught to think when it is within the confines of yeah. to the patient. But to think as a whole, it's a little bit different. Yeah. And you yeah. know, and we're in the reward system. You did a great job, yeah. you get a great mark, yeah. you know. But then now when you get out on your own you're still looking for that process yeah and some people it takes a while in order to yeah. really to take the ownership that okay yeah. I no longer have to look for approval for what I've done yeah. you know it's good enough and yeah. you know I, or I did a great job and so now yeah. I'll take in this role as a leader yeah and that's when some doctors are going to sink or swim isn't it Yes, um, it, it, yeah. it's, yes, it's it's a challenge because the yeah. mind is already telling them that you don't know anything. And, you know, yeah. interestingly, before I left training, one of and I tell this to when we talk about the mentorship portion of leadership. Mm. So I do mentor a lot. Mm. Um, you know, I tell a lot of um, students or if they're in training and I'm speaking to a resident, I said, in your last year of training, whenever you make a plan, mm. make a plan for this is the plan that I'm going to, you know, um, talk and discuss with my, my attending or my superior yeah. um, physician, whoever for us is the attending. And then you make a plan that you will use when you are out on your own, because the most anxiety ridden portion of your life is when you're yeah. now out on your own and you're questioning every yeah. single decision. Yeah. So if you've already trained yourself for yeah. at least the last half of the year, it says like, yeah. you know, when I'm out on my own, this is a decision that I'm going to make and I'm going to stick yeah. to it because this is what I believe. Then you've already put yourself in a position to at least start moving and transitioning into that leadership, which really yeah. starts within before you can do it without, right? Or that's great. You say. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Really good advice. Um, yeah, because, you know, we're going to do things differently, aren't we? We kind of, it's a bit like when you're doing your final medical exams, you're doing mm -hmm. everything. It's like the driving test. Yeah. You're kind of, yes. this is the, the analogy uh, they use at medical school in the UK. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, check your, check your mirrors, you know, 
before you mm -hmm. signal and before you make your maneuver, yeah, mirror signal maneuver. And this is what you're doing when you're showing your examiner how you examine a patient or something like mm -hmm. this, yeah? You do it mm -hmm. in the, the proper way. In real life, when you're working, mm -hmm. you do it in the most efficient way. Yeah, yes. you don't necessarily do it in that kind of like medical school examination book way. Yeah, yeah and your thought um, process, you keep yeah. that in mind. Like, how am I thinking? Yeah. What am I concerned about? You know, yeah. what is, because what you're concerned might be similar to your attending's concern, but your, uh, but your attending might also be maybe overly vigilant or not as vigilant as you. And yeah. you're like, oh, I'm also concerned about this. So yeah. you keep that and, and you build that muscle. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that's your, that's the start to me. Yeah. That's the start of your leadership muscles yeah. building it. I love that. Yeah. So as you said, use the word transition. So you're transitioning from, mm -hmm. you know, senior resident or fellow to attending. You have to learn to take ownership of the Absolutely. clinical scenarios. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to step into the leadership role, which, you know, is beginning with self-leadership. So mm -hmm. you need to kind of like, you know, convince yourself that you're a leader and, and then you can, because you will obviously be leading teams when you're an attending for sure. So um, that's great. Um I mean, you mentioned the the well-being um, role as well, and obviously the CEO role. So do you want to tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about those? Sure. So with the CEO role, that role um, is one that I think it's one of the most challenging roles. Mm -hmm. It's easy to put CEO up, but then to really yeah. think like a CEO and which mm -hmm. is, you know, a chief executive officer, it's a role that is another one that one has to transition into yeah. and that your well-being and what you're thinking about it's not just for now you're trying to build something that can have an impact yeah. for later so there are different phases that um a ceo goes through of course the phase of like i don't know what i'm doing and i don't even yeah. know why somebody's following me <laughs> yeah <Of laughs> that course. initial role and yeah. then it's the well i actually know a lot more than i'm giving myself credit for yeah. You know, that portion. And therefore, yes, you know, I can evict change. And in yeah. the role of a CEO, where you're leading in that, you're putting out either for me, it's content, and yeah. then putting out information and then leading a very small team, because my team right now is a very small team. However, mm -hmm. it does... Um, for leadership, it requires consistency, it requires forward thinking, um, and it also requires collaboration. Yeah. Because it's it, it goes right back to that first authoritative um, type set. It's yeah. not my way or the highway, because yeah. when you are tunnel visioned, you're still not getting the panoramic view. Yeah. And so in order for you to lead effectively, especially if you want to go far, you would need the yeah. panoramic view of what's going on. Yeah. So that's the... Um, that's what's occurring in the CEO role. Um, yeah. Now in wellness and well-being within um, the organization, that role mm. is a newer one. But like I said, who best to do it than the person who talks about self-care all day, yeah. every day. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and who's yeah. affecting the self-care model at work where my colleagues are like, I don't understand why you're so zen. I guess you're practicing <laughs> what you preach. And I'm like, yeah. of course I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's great. So yes, so that one is a newer role. But um, yeah. with that is, I see myself um, bringing not just the, okay, let's go out and socialize, which I think is one of my three pillars of what I think um, is important mm. in self-care, which is in, you know, aligning the mind, the body, and the spirit. The socialization mm. is aligning the spirit. But yeah. um, I think it's also important to, to go over other smaller techniques that have huge impact, which is like your daily routine yeah. that you can do for at least 20 minutes a day. So with that, those are the changes that I plan to um, yeah. implement in that wellness yeah. world cool mm -hmm. excellent that's that sounds really exciting um and and just kind of going back to the C, ceo role um mm -hmm. you, you have um you have groups you have like a uh is it like a subscription model and you have members of, of the of the Correct. society Correct. and so you show up for them on a oh, regular yeah. basis so you're their leader then as well mm -hmm. right because yes. you know <laughs> you're teaching them stuff and and they're mm -hmm. 
they're following you. So yeah, lots of uh, lots of different angles to that. Yeah, and it's great learning from that one too because mm. they're they're so different. Mm. And in that style, and and you might even recognize this within um, your own self, or for those who are listening, in that you have a plan in where you plan on helping this person mm. to overcome. Let's just say for me, it was trying to overcome um, a, a poor sleep habit or sleep mm, mm. hygiene. And yeah. uh, in the matter of working on that, we found that there was something even deeper, right? Mm, mm. And uh, the outcome of mm. just tweaking and the deeper response was this person, mm. they changed their job, they got mm. an $80,000 increase in salary <laughs> and uh, they're exactly so it shows how leadership it changes in your response to yeah. the person that you're leading like sometimes it's a little bit deeper than yeah. what you are and now so now we're working on different aspects so yeah. of stuff so right how do you move from working on sleep to increase in your your salary by 80 000? yeah yes yeah. it's, it's yeah. a very powerful way of yeah like we said just learning about the person and what you can tweak in order to improve their life and that's another form of leadership yeah right? mm-hmm. yeah very much so yeah yeah no that's amazing that's thank you for that uh, story um okay so um are there any, were there any people in the past, maybe senior to you, either physicians or non-physicians, um, mm-hmm. female or male, that kind of helped you kind of move move up towards leadership roles over the years? Yes, there were a few people, and um, actually, some of the one of the person that's really pronounced in my mind is someone I talk about too, who made me recognize that being an ER doctor or being a doctor period that you mm. didn't have to take yourself so seriously. Um, yeah. You were able to still laugh and still be effective. And that's um, Dr. Tiffany Morano. So um, she was an emergency physician um, at the medical school where um, mm-hmm. I attended in New Jersey. And now yeah. she's taken a, an even more senior leadership position yeah. at, at Columbia University. <laughs> I think she's like chairperson there. Yeah. But she was a co-director. And her style really brought a lot of us into emergency medicine because you yeah. recognize that you can lead effectively, but it didn't have to be that same author- authoritative style that I said like you know an autocratic and um so her style is one that I try to evoke um Mm -hmm. in addition though I do recognize that there are still strengths and there are still weaknesses within my personal style that I would like to improve upon and I mean so I work on that and as with everything you can get um inspired by someone but you are still you so you still you get inspired by them but you might be able to emulate them but they're still changes that you need to make in order to improve your particular style of leadership so yeah so that person um dr morano she was more mellow she um more had like an open door type of policy um and uh, she was able to show you your mistakes in a way that it didn't make you feel like you were bullied you know so it opened your mind to changes and how to improve upon yourself and that's the style that I like yeah Mm -hmm. that's a lovely uh a lovely kind of testimonial to Dr Morano and uh, a lovely style that it sounds like she she has um no wonder she's doing so well in the in the leadership uh, (laughs) sphere um Yeah, no, um, I, I like that you, you talk about kind of, yeah, it's okay to, you know, emulate someone else's style, but you put your own stamp on it, right? You, tw- you tweak it in your own way because it's your personality mm-hmm. coming through, but but mm-hmm. with that style, yeah. So, yeah, that's mm-hmm. great. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, just sl- sl- slightly um, um, less positive detour, okay. Uh <laughs> I just I just interested to know from my guests um, mm-hmm. if they've faced any challenges in the workplace that um, you know they're happy to talk about and and if so how they've 
navigated them and, and kind of come out the other side kind of stronger just so that there are some lessons um, for our listeners, mm-hmm. really. Is, is there anything that you're happy to talk about? Yes. I mean, there are times um, within um, the workplace where I've seen other styles of leadership where it's, I guess it would amount to some form of a, a style similar to being bullied. And so I'm a person that I'm very perceptive um, and I recognize when change is coming. I don't know if others can see it. I, I'm one of those that can see it a mile away. <laughs> it's yeah, like, okay, yeah. well, things are, the, the atmosphere has changed and so yeah. on. So I've been, um, you know, within organizations where the there was a leadership change then once the leadership changed the top um leadership of the organization changed Mm. the atmosphere changed you know there was Mm. yelling um the relationship between departments changed Mm. um the there were there was an incident where in a meeting you know a director Um, was in the meeting with the leadership team and uh, the head of leadership threw a clipboard across and said derogatory statements, you know, you guys think blah, blah, blah. And for someone who works within an organization, if you're seeing that, then you know things fall downhill. Um, yeah. So what happens as not, did it, was it directed directly at me? No, but it affected me just as much because yeah. when you have no respect for the person who's in charge of me, why would you have respect for me? Yeah. When you're, you know, so as when you are changing the environment in where we're, it's starting to, um appear Mm. you know and i'll use the word appear that it's one against the other instead of Mm. it's a collaborative team of us working towards a common goal then all you're invoking is fear and then you start invoking blame yeah um you're having an environment where instead of we're coming up with solutions we're coming up with problems well, this is a problem. That's a problem. And that's not an environment that I want to be in because that Mm -hmm. started to affect me mentally. The stress levels went up. Now, for those who are there listening, one thing that, um, you know, that I, an advice I was given from um, a doctor who I knew when I was a teenager, when I decided, you know, I said, I wanted to go into medicine. He said, never bring your work through the thresholds of your home whatever happens at work you let it stay there and you try not to bring it in so that was my philosophy for many many years during this time now this is part in my earlier um career the um i didn't have any kids it was just my husband and i and the the stress started to get through the thresholds of my house it was in the house he says you're just so unhappy he would say to me you're always like you know and the complaining is not that I'm complaining he's just like you weren't like this before there's such a change and that brings a lot of stress and and so I recognize and what was my solution my solution was to change and to get move from that environment to a different one and it was one of the best decisions that I made because I'm still so much happier now many many years later in a different environment and you know whenever you do leave a large organization they ask you like you know well what is one of the reasons and in your exit interview and you know and I said that I'm like Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, I tried not to because sometimes you're afraid of retaliation, but overall, it's just like the environment has changed. Mm, you know, mm. it has changed to one where it, my job just didn't feel safe. And emotionally, I didn't feel as if I was in a position to one, to even be able to effect change in the, in the, in the organization. Because yeah. if, if you're in that place where you're starting to get this learned helplessness, then how can you feel as if you're a part of mm. something that's going to be positive? Mm. So. 
that was my negative um, experience. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thanks for, for going into that. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, yeah, the learned helplessness. That's a great uh, concept to, to bring mm-hmm. in. Um, and it sounds like the, the really the, the steps were that you kind of, you had to recognize that yourself. You know, you had to recognize what was going on. So you need to have the insight as well to kind of like realize what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, just kind of admit it and acknowledge it. Absolutely. You know? um, and then, you know, you had to be vulnerable and you had to be brave. You know, it's a big step to to change job, change to a different different unit and then oh, yeah. actually share with your, um, you know, the department you were leaving, why, why you were leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's great. And that's that. You know, it's that's great leadership because, uh, you know, many, many of us would just be like, oh, you know, I, I don't care. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to have the exit interview. I, I'm not gonna, you know, go through all that emotion again by explaining it to them during the meeting. And, mm-hmm. um, but you're doing you're doing your other colleagues who are there a, a good service, aren't you? By kind of letting the department know what's going on, or letting Absolutely. the HR department. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Yeah, no, that's that's wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so um, in addition to to that, and I think the, the way you've the way you've described that you've navigated that was really uh, really lovely process. Um, do you have any other advice for our listeners on how to become strong, kind leaders like yourself? <laughs> on how to become a strong, kind leader, it starts with listening. And really, um, and when we say listen, it's really a non-judgmental listening. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times we listen, we listen with the intent of responding. So yeah. there's something that triggers. So instead of a non-judgmental listening, a lot of times we're listening with an agenda. Yeah. So to become a strong leader, you know, you will, and if you think of the, the words as leader, that means that someone wants to follow you. Yeah. And yeah. how will someone follow you if they feel connected to you and they'll feel yeah. connected to the message that you bring yeah. to them or the cause that you're yeah. trying to um, lead them towards? So that yeah. all starts with you listening so that you can connect. And that yeah. connection, um, it's there are different ways to do it. Um, you know, you might be able to connect through. Um, empathy through humor um through a style that's uh, um firm yet fair because some Mm -hmm. people like firm yet fair styles yeah um so you will need to recognize who within the organization or within the group needs what particular style and then you'll bring that to them Um, Because with all leadership, you're still going to connect at least with that person individually, and then you'll connect with them as a group. So one, yeah. you can do the the um, the individual connection. You figure out what style works yeah. best with them to get through to them, and then as a group, they've all bought in to whatever um, cause or your vision, mm. and then that's how you lead them as a team. I love that. I love that. I, I think that's um, that's such an in- intelligent leadership style. You know, it's such an in- intelligent way to think about leadership. Or, well, maybe you, you probably don't think about it. It just comes naturally <laughs> now, right? It's just kind of automatic now. But, um, like, I think a lot of leaders, um, again, like how we were talking earlier about being flexible mm-hmm. and being fluid and, and changing your style according to the situation, but you know, further to that, you also adapt your style according to the individual that you're in that leadership situation with at that time. <clears throat> because you're right, some people, you know, they need a certain amount of boundaries from their leader. So the right. firm and fair thing is how, mm-hmm. what they respond best to. Mm-hmm. And others, you need to be like really, really compassionate with them. Mm-hmm. And unless you're like that with them, they won't respond in a in a favorable way. So, Correct. 
I love that. That's great. That's um, yeah, it's fantastic advice. You're teaching me a lot, <laughs> sister dog. You're, you're teaching the, me a lot. <laughs> you're the you are the leader. You're you're you are the guy. You're my brother, Doc. There, who's <laughs> like you know one of my leadership gurus in my mind. So, <laughs> but you know what? I I learn every time I, I I speak to you guys you know um I I learn so much so uh you know I'm only I'm only getting better because of because of yourself so thank thank you um okay so what would be your take-home leadership messages for our listeners then okay so the take-home message is to recognize that leadership it does start within you know so work on self And working on self to become a better leader within yourself, it will help you to lead others. So if you would, um, and and recognize that it's a process. I think a lot of times we look at things as finality. Like I am now a leader, boom, I have done it. But it's still a process because things change, situations change. So work on being either adaptable if you're inflexible, if you're in, you know, if you are so adaptable, work on being um, a little bit more firm if you need to work on it. There's still aspects. You recognize the different areas in your life and and you work to improve upon it. Now, I know that there's also the philosophy that you said that's out there. That's just like, well, don't just work on all your positive attributes. Yes. Enhance your positive attributes. That's important. But if there are certain flaws within you that you recognize, and it's Mm -hmm. a flaw because you recognize it, right? And that means if you recognize it as something that you want to improve upon, then take a little time here and there to improve upon it. I want percent improve is better than nothing right so yeah yeah that's what i would recommend that's great and and i think what what you're describing and this seems to be a theme with mm-hmm. you from what from what i'm hearing is it's just a lot of working on yourself a lot of Absolutely. personal and professional development you know mm-hmm. kind of um recognizing those the strengths and the deficiencies and working on both of them um and using them in um in different situations when when necessary um so um and i think you mentioned before as well about the the listening the active listening so active listening is so so important important. yes yeah Yeah. didn't want to repeat myself but i think it bears repeating active yeah 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 for sure (laughs) for sure for sure yeah um i love that yeah i was um doing a talk today on the benefits of kindness in the mm. healthcare space in the, in the healthcare workplace oh, yes. and um t- talking about you know how you said people respond for to different things and um we're, we're talking about how um one one strand of kindness is um receiving and giving compliments and how actually yes. giving compliments is more powerful has and a more receive- powerful benefit than receiving compliments absolutely when you, and I, and this is kind of like this is great for me to prepare this talk because it was good, good good learning for me and it's like well mm-hmm. when you give a compliment you have to actively think about the person what sort of person yes. they are like mm-hmm. how they might take the compliment mm-hmm. you know so kind of like you you think about their so you think about what they've done well and mm-hmm. you think about their personality and how to um couch that compliment for them Mm-hmm. Um, and because you're thinking a lot more about the person, you talked about connection. You're actually yes. making that connection mm-hmm. um, on a on a deeper level. So, um, and that sorry, actually, I, that's the same. No, that same premise. It's noted too with the practice of gratitude, and yeah. they did the studies. You know where um, there was a a, a group of uh, um, workers that are doing evaluations. Mm. And uh, they did that, the neurochemical studies and, you know, and it recognized that when we, you know, we think about practicing gratitude that I'm grateful for, and we think about all the things within our lives, but when we do the exact same practice, which is writing to someone 
the things yeah. that you're grateful for that they have um, mm -hmm. done for you or improved, that it, en yeah. it enhances the neurochemicals that are released, yeah. you know? So it's just like, it's, and it goes with what you're mentioning, which is the yeah. act of kindness, you know, recognizing in someone you sit, think about yeah. what helps to improve or what that person has done, but yeah. you really are sitting and thinking. So you're reliving that emotion yeah. and, yeah. and it, it's, it's, it's absolutely positive. It's all yeah. positive if you're yeah. thinking of it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So. Yeah, no, for sure. Thank you. That's that's really helpful. Um mm -hmm. have to share that, share that study with me. Um okay, so um what are you currently excited to be working on that you'd like to share with our listeners? What's your big so, project at the moment? My big project. So my big project at the moment is that I am doing one-to-one -one coaching and um just a small yes to help you see we're all about improvement self-care and you know the improvement that i've had and um the great results that i've been able to evoke in some of my other clients i absolutely would love to continue to do so for um, those of you guys who are listening um you know my one-on-one -on -one coaching it is available on my um websites as you, you'll put out the your Karen docs website mm -hmm. um that and also speaking opportunities i'm you know i am opening myself mm -hmm. to speaking on to opportunities about the importance of self-care and the benefits actually so yeah. we have the importance of it but there's also very um, great benefits that yeah. it does in our lives and um a lot of times because we're in the healthcare space and someone sees the word doctor in front of yeah. our names, when we talk about um, self-care and importance of it, they're like, oh, we've already had somebody, you know, talking about that in the medical space, but it's also important in other aspects of our lives. So, you know, we have that in finance, we have it in yeah. education, like self-care is just important overall and so finding great small techniques that you can invoke into your daily um habits to improve yeah. yourself overall is very very important so those are some of the things that i teach yeah. with our um coaching and that i speak about fantastic so one-to-one -one coaching and mm -hmm. speaking on on wellness and well-being subjects and Absolutely. uh and you're right you know um just because we have like those two letters dr in front of our name yeah. I mean, you know it, it it wasn't until i started mm -hmm. my coaching journey and started reading more widely you know um that i realized there was more to wellness and well-being than just exercise healthy mm -hmm. eating weight loss smoking cessation and sleeping well you yeah know, there's all, all <laughs> these other things like connectedness and mindfulness and, and giving and um and, and gratitude like yeah. gratitude and kindness and how that kind of you know increases the level of of, of good neurochemicals and, and and good hormones oxytocin and reduces your cortisol level and so mm -hmm. reduces inflammation in your body and all this but most doctors don't know about that even though they probably should like I think about yeah, it, I think why didn't I know about all of this in absolutely you know, yeah it, it's not emphasized yeah <laughs> it's not emphasized. yeah yeah so, for sure yeah for sure yeah um okay brilliant so um if the listeners would like to reach out to you um you said that mm -hmm. you're Dr. Tamara Beckford on LinkedIn and that you're Correct. at your caring docs on all the other mm -hmm. platforms mm -hmm. um which which platforms are you on which other platforms are you on most okay so yeah. i am on linkedin so linkedin yeah. if you want to connect with me you can yeah. absolutely connect with me on linkedin send a message yeah. um yeah dr harrison and i we are on linkedin um <laughs> and definitely putting out a lot of information putting yeah. out a lot of videos yeah. guidance, good stuff really good, good stuff, stuff there to <laughs> help you absolutely yours um, is anyway <laughs> <laughs> yours is also awesome. come on sometimes <laughs> so uh we're definitely out there on linkedin that is the platform where we are living where we are yeah. thriving um you know really engaging with yeah. our audience so yeah. if you'd love to connect with us there and then from there we can like i said if you want to connect um one on one mm -hmm. then you can just send me a message through linkedin yeah. Name is very simple. Tamara Beckford. T A M A R A B E C K F O R D. You'll see yeah. my lovely face there. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's very lovely. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, 
and, and you're on and you're on Instagram and Facebook, aren't you? And, As your Karen Docs, yeah. yeah and yeah. that's Twitter. You are, yes, I am on Twitter, yeah. but I'm not as yeah. active on Twitter. I'm yeah. not um Twitterfied as yeah. Yeah. Um, I am um, on. <laughs> yes, I struggle with Facebook. it. Yeah, on <laughs> yeah. Facebook. If you want to connect with me too, on yeah. Facebook, um, you, you can connect with me. I have your Karen Docs, um, which is yeah. our business page, or you can connect yeah. with me on the personal page, Tamara yeah. Beckford. Perfect. Yes. I will um I'll make sure those uh, are in the in the show notes for sure. Um and um how about email? Do you have a, an email address oh, that you yes, like people absolutely. to? Absolutely. Yes. So if you would love to be able to connect with me through email, it's Dr. Beckford. That's D-R-B-E-C-K-F-O-R-D at yourcaringdocs.com. That's U R C A R I N G D O C S dot com. Perfect. Thank you for mm-hmm. that. That's great. And and finally, um, all good things must come to an end. So unfortunately, Aww. our lovely, lovely chat is coming to an end. But do you have any closing words you'd like to share with the listeners? Yes. So our closing words. With the, so we are all leaders. I know some people sit back and, you know, in our formative years, they say, oh, that person is a leader and that person is a follower. We are all leaders within our own mm-hmm. rights. And as we've mm-hmm. mentioned throughout this process, this is something that's evolving. Your leadership um, style will evolve your leadership um training must evolve (laughs) and therefore invest in yourself so invest in your mind invest in um your strength but do not ignore your weaknesses because that can just really help to amplify you as a leader overall so that would be my advice to anyone who plans on amplifying their inner leader brilliant that's that's fantastic thank you so much well, all that remains is to say thank you again so much for coming on on the show, sharing all your wisdom and wonderful advice with us. Um, thank, thank everyone for listening. <laughs> and yeah, until the next episode in two weeks, I wish everyone health, happiness and inspiring leadership. Take care.